you guys, Marty Schwartz here once again with my own project, Marty Music. Love you guys so much. Thanks for the continued support, especially right here, spreading the word on Marty Music. It means the world to me, so thank you. Uh, this video is another technique-oriented lesson. We're going to learn the second position up of the minor pentatonic scale. We can also call it box two would be another term for it. We're going to stay in the key of A, so A minor pentatonic. Also, at the end of this video, check a link for another free YouTube video of a jam track so you can practice this stuff over. All right, let's get to learning. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to teach you the second box pattern of the minor pentatonic scale. And let's look at box number one first, because it's the also what I like to call the home row, you know, the main scale that we all use for soloing. And still, you know, some of the greatest players in the world stick in this position the most. So you, uh, we're going to do the key of A, A minor pentatonic scale. So we've got, that's the root, fifth fret. And we're going to go <clears throat> five, eight, five, seven, five, seven. And that's the root again. So in the box one of the minor pentatonic, the root's on the E and it's on the D, seventh fret. You keep going, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight. You got any, any time you got any note on the low E, it's the same note on the high E. So we've got the root right there on the fifth fret of the high E as well. Now the box two is the next position up, all the same notes, but when you move to a different position on the neck, the shape looks different. For example, the A minor pentatonic is always an A note, a C note, a D note, an E note, and a G note. A, C, D, E, G. And that starts over again. A, C, D, E, G again. Root. A, C, D, E, G, A again. So that same five group of notes exist anywhere on the guitar, but each time you plug it in somewhere, it looks a little different. So box number two, really want to visualize that it's the connector to the, to the box number one. And it's going to be the A minor pentatonic. We're going to start with our middle finger right here on the eighth fret. And a lot of times when you're soloing, you don't use this position all the way across like this. But it's really good to just know them all inside and out uh, to get better. It really is. So it would be 8 to 10 on the low E. And you can use middle finger to pinky or index to ring or index to pinky because we're going to have to bounce. We're going to go back a fret on the A string. So it'd be eight to 10 on the E. Remember, that's still the root. So eight to 10, then we've got seven to 10 on the A string. And you're gonna see each one of the notes here is the upper note of this position. So. connect together and eventually you want to be able to just flow in and out of all the positions and think of the whole neck as as your canvas to solo so a minor pentatonic box number two eight ten seven ten seven ten on the d string and this is the first spot where we got our root which is right here on the seventh of the d string is home base, and it also feels resolved when you play some licks and end it on that root. Does that mean you have to end on the root every time you're playing a solo or a lick? No. But it's it's the context that we hear as home base. 8, 10, 7, 10, 7, 10. The root's on the 7 of the D. Now we're going to go 7, 9 on the G. And this is where we change positions. And you might recognize this from the extended scale I've taught right here at Marty Music. And that doesn't change either. But the extended scale is a way to get in and out of these different box patterns. And they're just little devices, but it's not the only way. So 7, 9 on the G, then 8 to 10 on the B, 8 to 10 on the high E. So let's go backwards now. 
It's just a, this is a great thing to kind of practice memorizing while you're watching TV or doing something else. So 10, 8, 10, 8, 9, 7. So that's kind of weird. 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, 8. 8, 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, 7, 9. Can't sing that high. 8, 10 on the B. 810 on the high E. And in this position, we want to, all the positions, we want to just get familiar with all the notes, but definitely start with knowing, you know, really know where those roots are. And so in box number two, the roots on the B string, 10th fret. So 10th fret B. And this box is used a lot in the upper register. You know, a lot of times this position is used really for the D, G, and B strings. Uh, so, one more recap, and then I'll show you how to turn that into the blues scale. And then you really want to just practice it. Just, just mess around with it, especially over a jam track. So, here we go. Uh, 8, 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, with the root on the 7 of the D. 10. You got a root down there, too, in box number 1. 7, 10, 7, 9, 8, 10, 8, 10, 10, 8, 10, 8, 9, 7, 10, 7, 10, 7, 10, 8. You want to practice that, you know, up and down, get familiar with it. But now let's focus just on the D, G, B, and high E strings of that position, because that's what I use the most for soloing. I'll use the A string too, but rarely do I get down to the E string in this position. It does happen, but it's very rare. So let's, let's practice this a whole lot right now with these fingerings, uh, or this fingering. So index on the root. We're going to start on the root. And we go 7, 10, 7, 9, and then index shifts to the 8 of the B, 8, 10, 8, 10, 10, 8, 10, 8, 9, 7. That was all with index and ring. And then pinky on the 10 of the D to the root. So that's a nice thing to flow back and forth. And as you get comfortable with it, you can see that your home row is always right below. So back to the D, G, B, and high E. We're going to add the blues note now. And this is another beautiful thing to practice. This stays the same. So we have 7, 10 on the D. And then 7, 8, 9 on the G. Then we have the B string stays the same, which is 8, 10. But now we're going to add the blues note up here. 8, 10, 11, 10, 8. And so when you have that blues note, you have stuff like this. It's right here. So you've got a hammer on pull off. got sliding back and forth. And then you also just have the little run of hammer-ons doing the scale. With the blues note, 
right here on the 11th of the high E, you have the same thing, hammer on pull off. You have slide. And you also have bend. Which also, the, the B and high E string can be bent up to the next box position note. So you could bend this high E on the 10th fret, a whole step and a half, half step for the blues note, whole step for the next note up the scale. So there is a lot of things to milk out of this position. But really, I wanted to introduce you to the whole shape. There's diagrams all over the internet for this uh, pattern. If you wanted to print one out, it's a second away on the internet anywhere. And I'll be honest with you, when I'm practicing it, I don't really play that E string too much because that's the kind of awkward spot of it. Because we want to hear that root, that A note. And the root's only in two spots in this uh, box number two. It's the seventh fret of the D, tenth fret of the B. As you get better, go back to your home row and then see, start to visualize both positions connected together. And look at little pathways to connect them. There was a lesson. Thanks again for your continued support. I hope you learned something. Uh, also, real quick, there's going to be a link to a jam track I want you guys to check out. So thanks for that. And uh, also thanks for uh, liking, sharing the videos, leaving comments, other stuff you want to see. I'm reading all the comments and it's guiding the videos I'm making. So be a part of it and let me know and I will, uh, I will check it out. So thanks again for the support of uh, Marty Music right here and we'll see you real soon. See you later.